Hey YouTubers, my name is Brian and today I'm going to show you how to create an animation using a tween code generator available in the download section at PyLive.com. Let's take a look at the animation we'll be making. Just a simple alpha tween of a black ball. Uh, it's in available for download at pylive.com in the download section. Right there. Uh, I have already saved it, so I don't need to. So anyway, that's how you download it. Let's get to the code and the project. First, I'll go ahead and delete all this and start from scratch. Um, <coughs> when you download the program, it's in the zip file. It also comes with the PDF with just a brief overview of what's going on or what its purpose is. It tells you, talks about the tween constructor and it gives you references uh, to Adobe documentation so that you can become a master at flash animation using the tween class. Okay, um, I'm going to go into the tween machine. The It's the executable file in the zip file. It has seven fields. Uh, each field corresponds with one of the properties of the tween class constructor. Uh, the first field is asking for the tween name. This can be anything you want to call it. Uh, so we'll go with my tween. The second field is the instance name of the object that we wish to tween. We don't have the object's instance name yet because we don't have an object. So let's go create one. Let's go to the timeline. Make sure we want to have a layer for our object. Let's create a circle and convert it to a symbol. Uh, the name is not important. You may want to give it a uh, uh, important name, uh, a unique name for your library. If you have a large project, it'll help you keep it clean and understandable, whatever. So, click on your object and go to the Properties tab. If you do not see your properties uh, tab, go to Window and make sure this is checked and your properties panel will be there. We are concerned with the first box here, the instance name. We will go ahead and call this the black ball. Uh, we need this name for the field in the tween machine. So go ahead and press control C to copy the name. Go over to our tween machine the object field and either control V or you can right click and paste it into the field name. It's a good practice to copy and paste that just so that you can avoid any typos because if you wanted to type it in and forgot that you had an uppercase letter, uh, your tween, you will get an error because it's not spelled correctly. Um, so just copy and paste it. Um, the properties, we can now tell the tween machine what property of our object we would like to tween. For this video, we're going to tween the alpha property uh, or the opacity or the visibility uh, in ActionScript that's called alpha. Uh, the effect we're going to use is none ease none 
in my opinion, it's the best effect for uh, animating the alpha property of an object. Uh, the others just make it look goofy. So you can play around with that. And for other properties, uh, the other effects look good just for the alpha. The nineties nine is a good choice. All right, the beginning. Uh, we want to start with uh, our object at 100% alpha. So we're going to go ahead and put a 1 in there. In ActionScript, 1 means 100%. If you wanted to go 50%, uh, uh, you would go 0.5. If you wanted to go 25%, you'd go 0.25. In our case, we want to go with 100%, so just a 1. The next field is finish. Uh, what is the value of the, uh, the object's alpha property upon completion or the finish of between? We want it to disappear, so we're going to go with 0%. The duration is the last field. Uh, it is how many seconds do you want your tween to last, or how long will it take it to complete? We want to go with whatever. It goes up to 10 on this drop-down box. You can type in a million. I don't know if it'll do a million or not, but you can type in whatever. In the drop box, it goes up to 10. This is a half a second, three quarters of a second, one. I'm going to choose two. And because now we have our object created, we've given it an instance name, and we've filled in all of our fields. We can now just press the Get Code button, and all of the code that will be required for us to tween the alpha property of our black ball is right there, and it is perfect. Um, it's in four boxes because usually a tween animation code is going to be among other code in your file. Uh, so instead of just having one big box with all of your code, we've split it up into four different sections. Uh, it just is kind of easier. Uh, the first box has our imports. Um, if these are kind of all just kind of a blanket thing, it, it it pops up every time, but they're always going to be the same. Uh, it also has our variables. It's just going to have one. Uh, that's the name. Uh, the instance name that we gave it was our tween name there. Uh, this is our new tween. And our complete function. Uh, if you do not need to do anything after your uh, your tween is complete, then you actually don't need this last import. But in what we're doing, uh, we're going to need all of them. So here we go. Uh, let's start copying our code over to our flash file. I'm going to start with the imports. I'm going to click copy, go over to a layer for action script, control V or right click and paste. Have our imports there. Go back to the tween machine. We need our variable. Copy it, paste it, our tween code, we need to copy it, and paste it. It has our instance name of our object, our black ball, the property that we wish to tween, which in this case is alpha, using the none ease none effect, starting at 100% alpha and going to 0% alpha, we want it to disappear and we want it to last for two seconds. <coughs> and when it's complete, we want our function to fire off, so we need that code. I'm going to copy it, paste it. Uh, in that box has our complete function and our complete, our finished listener, complete listener. Uh, once our tween is complete. This listener will fire off and will go to this function. 
which is the name that we gave our tween with the word end. Wow. So that's that. And uh, so we have our function. Inside of our function, uh, we have it we remove our listener, which is not always necessary, but it's a good coding practice. Uh, next, it just has a comment for doing something. In this case, we're not really going to do anything, but we want to see that it's complete, so we can trace something out. Now, when we press Control Enter and uh, we should see our black ball disappear in two seconds. One, two, and it's complete. Done. Yay. All right. Okay, so now it's done. Uh, we've completed our animation. Uh, we could stop there, but let's add another tween so that we can make our ball reappear. So we can go back to the tween machine. Um, our tween name needs to be something else. So let's call it, well, yeah, because we need a different function name. So tween B, or you can name it anything else. Uh, we need the object name to be the same. We're tweening the, the black ball, so we can leave that alone. We're tweening the alpha property again. We're using the same effect, none is none. We're going to begin at this time at 0% opacity because of when we start our tween on this one, the, the, op uh, the alpha of our object will be at 0%. So we want to start from 0% and complete or finish at 100%, which is 1. And we could change the duration to 1 and a quarter. Why not? Get code. We already have these imports of the same ones. We do need our new variable. Copy that. And we can paste it uh, right by our other one. We need our new tween instance for our new tween. So we need to copy that. And we can paste that. We can get rid of our trace statement, paste that in. Let's open up our function a little bit, our complete function. And we can put our other complete function. Copy that, paste that. And just to make things a little more visible, we can make this a little larger. And we can press our auto format button, which makes our code a little more pretty uh, and more readable. Just to make it a little more readable here. And we'll open that up. <coughs> All right, so let's review the code one more time. We've got our imports. We've got our variables. By the way, those are outside of, I keep them outside of all of our functions because uh, if you don't, you run the chance of the action script uh, or the flash uh, garbage collector coming through and picking those up. So if you've ever had an animation that didn't complete, it could be because it's been picked up. So to keep that from happening, we just put our tweens outside of our functions so that they aren't able to be picked up like that. Um, it's uh, So hopefully that'll help someone there too. It's a good tip. Uh, so we've got our first tween that's going to make our ball disappear. And when it is complete, our listener for that tween will fire off. And we'll run the code within our function uh, here. It's going to remove the listener. Just a good coding practice. And then <coughs> we're going to fire off our second tween to make our ball reappear. Um, and it's going to listen for that tween to complete right here and go to our second complete function for and the one for this tween and once it's complete it's going to remove that listener and we 
can have it do something. We'll trace out the word done. And let's go ahead and, I don't know, I like using the auto format button, so make sure it's clean. And then we'll hit our check syntax button to make sure we haven't got any errors. And you can see that we have zero errors and zero warnings. So when we hit control enter and run our animation, we shouldn't get any compile errors. Uh, so let's go ahead and test it. Control enter. It's disappearing, and reappearing, and I'm tracing that done. There we go. That is how you use the tween machine that we have created for ActionScript 3. Hopefully now uh, you are able to successfully use the code generator, the tween machine code generator, to help you create awesome ActionScript 3 animations. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.